And I've been going back and forth on picking up one of the X100 series, uh, whatever the newer one. I don't know if it's the X100V. Um, just to have a, a nice camera, but smaller, compact. And as you guys probably know, that camera has a fixed 23 millimeter F2 lens. But today's video um, is to see if the one lens will be enough for me. So we're going to a, a um, I wouldn't call it a vacation destination place. It's a German town. It's called Frankenmuth. It's in Michigan. Uh, they got good chicken and a few other things. Some walk around time with the family. And I'm only going to take this one lens, the 23mm f1.4 on my Fujifilm X-T2 camera. And the small little Flashpoint Mini Flash a Zoom Mini, which I always have in my camera bag just in case I need it, need it. I don't take a lot of flash photography, but there are some times where you just need it. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in the bag and we're going to head out and I'm going to take some video and I'll let you know what I think. And really, this is the first time walking around with one lens. I have been gravitating towards this one here. Uh, where is it? The 16 millimeter f1.4 this has grown to be my favorite lens and i do know that with the fujifilm x100 series you can get a wide adapter which i think comes close to this focal length but not sure that's probably if i do the x100 i'll probably do that is pick up the wide angle adapter but i'd prefer to stay with the 23 just for the size factor really i want something small without having to change lenses, you know, just shoot with what you got. And that's what I'm gonna to do today. So the 23 millimeter F1.4 on the Fuji X-T2. So let's hit it. Just my tech feature is the one I forget. Yeah, yeah. That's like the... So this is where this, it's not wide enough. Six cookies. Uh, I probably a, like those tiny little movies. This is where, we gotta get creative here. Well, I'm trying to take a picture. I'm gonna see if this 35 millimeter is. Yeah, I'm really hungry. Uh, see this? That's where it's, when it came, that 16 millimeter would have been perfect. That, uh, Garrett. Oh, you. thank you. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank and you. there's one for you. You got the same thing I did, honey? For you guys. Oh, Everybody's fine. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And then we'll try it out. Let's see if I could do some food pictures. Yeah, the F2. That's what that lens goes to. Go back a little bit. What do you think, Gavin? Good chicken dinner? World famous chicken. What they do is they, I think they take a whole chicken breast and cut it in half, because even though you get a three piece, it's like one and a half chicken breast, I think. Pretty good though. The stuffing is good, yeah. You like the stuffing? Yeah. Is it stuffing or dressing? That is the question. So after eating, we headed downstairs to what they call the castle shops. So under the Bavarian Inn restaurant, there's a bunch of stores, candy stores, things like that. And I wanted to see what this lens would do at an F2 because although it's a 1.4 aperture, maximum aperture, aperture on this lens, the X100V is only an F2. So throughout this whole day, I only use a maximum aperture of F2. Again, it's not going to be a like for like, it's a different lens, but it just gives me an idea of what light, as far as the amount of light, low light level of shooting I can use at an F2. Took some pictures of these, uh, I think they're Rice Krispie treats, and the white balance is a little bit off. I didn't go into raw. These are all out of camera JPEGs. And these are just some pastries they had at another shop. Again, some more bread and pastries. They had for sale then moving back upstairs outside there's a I think they call those drummer boys kind of like the Christmas thing but it was I don't know seven eight foot tall 
and we started to head down to this outdoor castle type of shop area walking past the Bavarian Inn and they had an outdoor beer garden with some music this is one where I would normally use a zoom lens this is a shot where I wish I had my zoom lens walk down here and take a closer picture here of the bridge without a zoom and make up some decent space oh yeah shooting some damn cannons or some shit See, this is just about right as far as focal length. So we spent quite a bit of time walking around to the different stores. And for the most part, the focal length was working for me. Um, I like taking pictures of building signs in the storefronts. And I was able to either use my feet to zoom in and take a picture of the sign or, or pull back a little bit and take a picture of the storefront. As you can see in this picture with the Cherry Republic, which is a really cool store. Um, yeah, it turned out just like how I wanted it to. The Pepper Palace. Again, um, I had some room to come in or pull out with my feet. And, uh, you know, it worked. And there was a mannequin in front of one of the stores. It was pretty cool. Popcorn Wagon. It's not the greatest popcorn store we go to it every time we're in Frankenmuth, and this picture turned out pretty decent. One inside, white balance was a bit thrown off because of the, the yellow floor and the popcorn. So if I was wanting to keep this picture, I'd go into RAW. And I always shoot RAWs back up for this case. Um, probably 98, 99% of my pictures turn out fine shooting JPEG, auto white balance. But then you get these pictures like this one where it has a lot of yellow hints or hues and then your white balance gets a bit shifted um, it's fine for this for this purpose but this is JPEG so I didn't these are totally out of the camera I didn't tweak these at all shooting the, you know the standard uh, picture profile Grand Traverse distillery we we did go in the store and uh, I think they they procure or you know resell spirits um, I don't even know if they age their own spirits as far as bourbon goes but um, I have had theirs uh, as far as a taste test not bad bourbon if you're looking for bourbon I actually prefer their standard one but for $50 it wasn't quite worth $50 it was more like a $30 bourbon for 50 but not too bad it's it's worth visiting if you're in the area and you like spirits now you guys remember hearing me say about the Canon uh, the sound of a cannon and there was some kind of American Revolution reenactment going on and these guys were sitting on the bench that was a pretty cool picture I kind of like that jerky store beef jerky store and they had some guy here where they had these parrots and the funny thing it was it was almost a scam so it was ten dollars per person to get your um, picture with the parrot so he would kind of con people in to having the parrots go on them just to collect the money. But this picture turned out okay. It was pretty funny. We didn't go in the store, but very cool sign. Thought this was really nice. My son got some ice cream, but this um, older couple staring at each other, I thought that was a really decent picture. Again, F2. Uh, I didn't want to go above F2, even the lens goes to F1.4. This is some fudge they had in that store just to kind of see what the capability of, of the F2 is as far as the um, out of focus. But again, lens to lens, X100V might not perform the same as this because they all have their own characteristics. But 
Um, just kind of seeing what F2 will do. There's a honey store. A lot of cool signage. And this is more, more photos of this reenactment they had uh, with these guys camped out. One guy was dressed as an Indian. Pretty cool stuff. My wife always yells at me saying, don't take their picture, don't take their picture. I'm like, these people would not dress up. The guy's eating. These people would not dress up if they didn't want their picture taken. Just more pictures of the camp. And then we're heading back, and there's a picture of a bridge on the other side. Now, this is that Bavarian Inn, but taken from across the street. They're a busy road, so I couldn't like walk in the road without getting hit before. I was trying to take a picture of the whole building, but I couldn't from that side of the street. So when I got yelled at by my wife that she was hungry, we were actually where these people were. And this was really cool. Uh, I think my wife was yelling at me here too, like, don't take that guy's picture. It was a jazz player, and he was just, you know, had a collection, bucket out. He was really good, and I thought this was a pretty good picture. Um, I really like these pictures of the flowers. I got a couple pictures of flowers. Again, just walking down the street on the other side, um, and really cool. F, no, no more than F2. Got up close to this one. Went into the fudge store, watched them make some fudge. More than more than enough light. And this is just an up close picture of the fudge that, that was in the the shelving unit. And this and this lens, you know, I was pretty impressed with the performance of this lens. I don't use it enough. Driving it like it's a Volkswagen. Yeah. Too funny. Fudge time. I want the, I want the end. A little sugar action. Good. Very good. Frankenmuth Fudge Kitchen. What was this? Eight seventy-five for this one piece with the coupon, ten percent off. So is it worth it, Mom? Are we going? Yeah, I think so. So guys, now that I'm back home, I wanted to give you some final thoughts of having the one lens, the 23mm focal length, and what I consider buying the Fujifilm X100V. Short answer is yes. Now there were many times that this 23mm focal length wasn't wide enough, and there was also some times where it wasn't long enough. You've seen there on the bridge. But for the most part, I could, you know, step closer or backwards and get my shot. Not all of the time, but for the most part. And that's really what it comes down to with the 23 millimeter focal length. Sometimes you have to settle. It is a good all-purpose lens, taking uh, photos of people, uh, pets, landscape. If you can just have one lens, for me, it's the 23 millimeter. There are obviously better options. Normally, I walk around with a 16 millimeter f1, uh, 1.4 and a 35 millimeter f2 at the minimum in my bag and i switch back and forth and that's really what i'm trying to to find is a walk around camera a camera that i can have with me all the time go on vacation where i don't have to bring a ton of lenses if it's not a photography vacation and um and the frankenmuth would have been a perfect example of that walk around have lunch um so the other thing that that I wanted to see is if the f2 would be uh, a big enough aperture given this is an APS-C body for those low life situations indoors that are moderately lit you know not a real dark situation but you know real life scenario uh, and can I get enough background separation if I want to take pictures of my lunch or as you can see in in some of the restaurant shops some of the other food pictures or just general pictures inside and still have my shutter speed where I don't get motion from people. And it did great. It was perfect and it was fine for the light inside. Um, I was able to take some awesome pictures. Great separation still. I had no qualms about it. And all in all, it was a really good experience. So a couple of things that I that I found taking one lens. It was really cool 
to have to work to get my shot, not just switching a lens, but actually really thinking about how can I get this? Uh, that was fun for me. The other neat thing about this day was not having to keep on switching and grabbing lenses and, and really second guessing myself. I'll look at something and say, oh, you know, that's probably better with a 16 millimeter and my family might be 15, 20 feet uh, in front of me and I'm back digging in my camera bag. There was none of that. I had it in my hand pretty much the whole time and I, I still got some complaints about taking pictures while everybody was hungry. But for the most part, um, it just, it got it done and it just got out of the way as far as the family goes and interacting with the family. Um, and that was really, really cool. So will I pick up the X100V? Yes. Now, I did look on, on B&H and a few others, and they're pretty much sold out, and they're the same price. This camera's two years old now, and it's the same price, I think 1300 something. I was hoping it'd have a couple hundred dollar discount. So I'm thinking about it. I definitely want it. I'm definitely going to get one. I don't know if I'm going to wait until maybe the holidays. Maybe they put it on sale. Um, I did look at historically, it looks like it's a three year cycle. So I don't think we're going to get another X100 uh, series camera for probably another year. It'll probably have the new sensor after they go with the X-H2 and probably the X-T5, maybe, I don't know. But we do probably have some time and I'll look for sales. I'm not going to jump as soon as I buy one because we don't go too many places. The season's winding down and it's becoming fall. And I think I'm going to make do and I'm going to maybe take one or two more outings of just a 23 millimeter um, just again to get more familiar with on trying to make the shot and trying to see through that 23 millimeter mindset. But all in all, the, the other thing that really uh, stood out to me is I don't shoot this 23 millimeter f1.4 much. And it did awesome. The the sharpness, the colors. And this is a lens that it looks cool. I mean, you know, they just redid this 23 millimeter lens. And I like this one uh, mostly because of the look. Look at that lens. Doesn't that just look cool on the XT body? The short fat and these uh, these markings because this lens has a clutch. So the other lens that that they redid was a 35 millimeter f 1.4. And I'm, they still make that one. I'm thinking about picking that up just so I, I can have it. I, I just like these older lenses. Maybe it's a sign of my age. I don't know. So, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. And the whole Frankenmuth thing, let's let's go out with the achy, breaky heart, uh, Billy Ray Cyrus polka style. So, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.